Today I fucked up by letting a date knock over my toilet. He is the standard, this was quite some time ago qualifier. I just thought it was funny and I should finally share on my cake day. So I met this girl on Bumble and before I even picked her up I got into a fender bender and almost cancelled the date. In retrospect I should have. Anyway, we go out and have a great time. She comes over to my place afterwards and one thing leads to another and well, you get the point. And so did she ow. Anyway, so I'm kind of a lazy person in that as long as things are not broken I'll just leave them be. I'd been renting this place and for a while there was this rotting ring around my toilet forming. I later found out it was a leak that was rotting the wood around it. The toilet would wobble sometimes when I sat on it, but I had a system, yes I'm terrible. Well anyway after we finish up she gets up to use the restroom. Now I'm in cloud 9 so I don't think about my flimsy toilet when she goes in there. Big mistake. As I'm laying down the next thing I hear is a loud scream and, help. I go to the door and knock and then I enter and I see this girl, naked, on her knees holding up my toilet, water spilling everywhere looking mortified. She says, it just tipped over. I don't know what happened. I'm trying real hard not to laugh as I help her balance it back upright. I explain what happened and she laughs it off a bit too. But then I take her home cause you know, she still has to go and Then I never saw her again Don't know why tongue I ended up having to call my landlord to fix it and I learned my lesson after that Too long didn't read, didn't fix a wobbly toilet and my date knocked it over costing me future dates is there a group giving advice to young people entering the dating world? Make sure your bathroom is in good working order, clean, and has a trash can. Your merit as a mate depends on it. And make sure you have more than just one, flat, disappointing pillow. Seems she was a wee bit tipsy. I see what you did there. Did none of your friends have to take a shit at your house, ever? Friends? LOL. They weren't coming over much at the time. If they did it would have been them instead of her. Next time, fix that shit, smirking face, to Slim chance she shared that part of the story with any friends. I really hope she sees this. Well it was my fault so I'm sure she was like, girl, wait till I tell you about this trashy guy and his place literally falling apart. I would have deserved that tongue. Today I fucked up by trying to be funny while creating a new account and almost ruining my relationship. This happened a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago my girlfriend asked me if she could use an account of mine for an ebook supplier. We share basically all our internet services so I obviously said yes. When she texted me for my password, it turned out that I forgot it and I told her she just reset it and I will change it to something we both can remember. After that she didn't answer me anymore for a while. That was a little weird, but nothing to worry about maybe she just had something else to do. So in the evening on the same day, I came home and she wasn't there. When I went into the kitchen I found a little piece of paper on which she wrote, thanks for lying to me. I am at my parents for a while. At this moment I was scared freaked out and confused as fuck. I did not know how I would have lied to her and why she would just pack up and go. Immediately tried to call her to figure out what is wrong, but she wouldn't pick up. I texted her to call me please, because I really don't know how I have lied to her. She wouldn't call or text on that evening. I went to bed frightened as fuck, that I would have lost her and I really did not sleep well. The next morning she came home, as she figure out that it might make sense to talk about the matter. It turned out that when she tried to reset the password for my account, a safety question popped up. It was, what was the name of your first partner? She always knew that we were both out first partners and we really liked that about our relationship. So when she typed in her name and it didn't work, something just went off in her. At the time I chose this question and the answer to it, I wasn't in a relationship. I was really desperate for a girlfriend back then and the whole topic made me quite frustrated. So my answer to the question was, nobody ever. She didn't know this obviously, so when she found out that her name wasn't the answer, she thought I lied to her about something that is really important to her. Too long didn't read, girlfriend tried to reset the password for an account of mine. When the answer to the safety question about my first partner wasn't her name, she thought I lied to her the whole time and almost broke up with me. 
yikes, that's what I thought immediately. They're either super young, and she'll hopefully grow out of it, or this guy just got the biggest red flag ever and possibly saved himself years of misery. Take it from someone who already dealt with that once. Ah, the classic jump to conclusions. My partner and I have a shared bank account for our household expenses, we also have personal bank accounts, but that's the only account that we share. You may be a couple but you're both entitled to your privacy, I suggest that you guys each create your own accounts. She should have asked you first before getting angry, especially since you have created the account before she came into your life, so the answer wouldn't have been her name. Even if it was her name, she still could get it wrong. Maybe it is first name last name and she only did first name. So many reasons she could have got it wrong. That doesn't seem like a healthy response to the situation. A simple question could have saved a whole load of trouble but she moved to her mum's for a few days and ignored you. I'd take this as a big stick with a rectangle of red fabric attached. Ye she's being stupid, no offense, but she had no way to know what that meant. Today I fucked up by making my daughter wear her retainer 8 years longer than necessary. This FU is 8 years in the making and only discovered yesterday. My daughter's teeth were a mess when she was little. Massive underbite, and top teeth pointing every direction but down. From age 8 to 13 she endured two separate rounds of braces, numerous appliances, retainers, night guards, bands, the whole litany of orthodontic torture. Five years and $15,000 later, she had a gorgeous smile. I don't remember her final orthodontist visit, I do recall we were supposed to have checkups. We didn't. Her teeth were perfect, she hated the orthodontist, and I hated the bills. Yesterday I joked at dinner that we would all need floss after eating the corn on the cob and ribs. My now 21 year old daughter replies that it's hard to floss with her retainer. My wife and I both look confused, and wife asks why in the world she still wears her old retainer. To which my daughter replies, not that kind of retainer, she talking about the permanent one, and she opens her mouth and tilts her head, and much to my dismay there is a metal bar installed behind her front six teeth on the lower jaw. Apparently my wife and I completely forgot that she still had a bonded retainer to keep her teeth from shifting. Since a bonded retainer is also called a permanent retainer, my daughter thought that it was literally permanent and she would wear it her entire life. Unfortunately, over the past eight years as she's grown the bonded retainer had the opposite its intended effect. Her front six teeth are basically in a straight line now. It's not really noticeable when you look at her smiling, but when she opens her mouth wide you can clearly see things aren't right. My daughter has an appointment with the orthodontist next week and will probably need extensive work to put things right. Meantime, she is taking great satisfaction in telling friends and family what great parents she's got. Too long didn't read, wife and I forgot our daughter had an orthodontic appliance for 8 years and now I'm going back to paying the orthodontist's sports car lease. It might be different since she had braces when she was younger, but I'm 22 and still have my permanent retainer in. My ortho said I could remove it if I really wanted but that it wasn't gonna hurt me and he kinda told me I should keep it on. It's only my bottom teeth toe. Edit, I know I already kinda said this but I just wanted to reiterate. I was like 15 sixteenths or so when I got my braces off, not nearly that young, so double check with her ortho about what's right. In my 40s and still have my lower permanent retainer in. Oh boy, yeah? That needed adjustment as your daughter finished growing. The lower retainer is usually meant to stay installed for 10 to 20 years. I got my braces off 15 years ago and still have mine, but they do need tweaking until the person is 20 or so. This comment targeted at everybody saying they are meant to stay put forever. Not at the same size as when you were 13. My author strongly recommended my wire stay in forever, but they were willing to remove after 5 years and I got a nighttime retainer wear forever at night. 25 and still have my bonded retainer in, that I got put in when I was 12. Had a few checkups over the years to make sure it was behaving. The only problems I had were when my wisdom teeth started growing, but otherwise fine. Plan on keeping it in forever I believe. It's for your daughter and flossing, I still floss a lot so here are some tips. There's special hard tipped floss that you can buy for braces, they go through the teeth and under the wire, instead of straight through the teeth gap. If you don't want to use those, 
You can also shimmy some oral B super fine dental floss through the gap below the braces, and use tweezers to pull it out on the other side if you need help. Um guy you kidding, I have that still in my mouth. My parents never took me back to get it out and that was more like 10 years ago lol my teeth still look fine though. My dentist told me it's for life and shouldn't come off.